Welcome back, folks. I'm lucky enough to be joined by Maniac, the only non-French player on LDLC.com from the lovely country of Switzerland. How are you doing today? I'm really fine at the moment. Thank you. So, first question. Uh, we've seen a huge resurgence, in, in, even though you're not French, in, in French Counter-Strike. You know, back in the day, there were one or two teams that could compete, but now we're looking at possibly three top contenders. Epsilon's gone through, Titan Apps still go through, and obviously you guys are well on your way. Uh, what's going on in France? I really don't know. I think the, um, the CS source, the French scene, was actually really high, high-leveled. And so when we switched to CSGO, we, we had ears. And what is interesting is that the players are starting to mix. You know, now Shaxi is playing with SF and stuff, and some new lineups just created, and some, we had some nice mixtures. And yeah, we tried to help us, to help each other in the French, in the French scene, so to say. And I think, yeah, we have a really, really big potential as a country now in Counter-Strike. Yeah, it's great to see. I mean, the more countries that can have top contenders, better for everybody. North America, come on. Uh, next question, uh, Moman. Uh, a lot of teams are adding uh, a real coach versus uh, you know, a cheerleader manager type that does basic stuff. Walk us through, I know he's new to the team, but uh, your plans for him and how's it going so far? Yeah, so this is actually our second event with MoMA. He was with us in Katowice, EMS1. Um, he's doing, of course, the administrative job as a manager, but in a coach way, I think um, he's really, his big strength is uh, with the um, human being. You know, he's a real good coach at motivating people and making us get focused on the game. And I think he still needs some time to, to really get the strategic point of Counter-Strike, and then he will help us also in the strategic point. But from now, he's more like a guy who sits with us and say, okay guys, let's focus now. You have to be focused, concentrated. You have to be on a positive mindset. And he has, he's really good. I mean, he has that charisma, you know? And he's someone I, I wanna trust. When he talks to me, I wanna trust him. When he motivates me, it's working. So this is a really big strength we are using right now. Yeah, and he himself is used to the big stage. Obviously, Counter-Strike player, StarCraft II player. So, you know, he gets, uh, you know, what goes on inside your head as the guy sitting in the chair. So that's gotta, that's gotta make it a little easier for you guys. Yeah, as you said, he played many games at the highest level. So that's the proof he, he, he knows how to be a winner. You know what I mean? He knows what it is to be on a stage. He knows what, what fears you have to fight. He knows what troubles you can be in. And that's exactly the help we need because we are, even though we are, um, together for eight months or so. We are still a pretty young team. I, I'm not really used to the big stage and stuff, and his help in his way is really important for us. Yeah, and, and I do need to apologize to him. He jumped into my stream one night and he matchmaked with me, and he deranked, which I felt really bad about, but he was a super nice guy about it. All right, next question. You haven't played the new maps yet, but obviously it's a big talk at this event, these two new maps, Overpass and Cobble. Thoughts on them, and without giving any secrets away, uh, how do you feel about them as a team? Because you m might possibly have to play them. Yeah, well, it's no secret. Um, we, we practiced the map. Uh, we focused a lot on them. And I think, they, of course, they need some, some real small tweaks. Some, some like, cobble is maybe too city-sided in some point. But I really think they offer a, a lot of new strategic um, possibilities. And that's really uh, interesting for Counter-Strike because, you know, at the moment, each team could be a potentially good T team or CT team, uh, depends on the way they, they look at the map. And we're going to see, I think, on Overpass, for example, we can see some really strange T side or some really strange CT side, uh, strong CT side, I mean. So yeah, for us, it's really nice. And we have to see more competitions, because right now, the people are like at the beginning of the map. They just know the basics, some principles, maximum one or two strategies. But let's see, one or two events or three events, it's going to be really interesting when the people really get the maps and uh, how they got to play it. Gotcha. And one, uh, another question for you. Huge pause on your side with some technical issues. And you were kind of getting on a little bit of a roll there. You know, kind of finding your mojo. Uh, but then obviously you lose that momentum in game because you're out of game for a while, keyboard issues, all that. What do you guys do as a team to kind of keep that focus? Because that really could have worked in Navi's favor with that long pause in the sense of them getting together. Yeah, it was really hard for us because the game was a big fight. Uh, we didn't really have any big momentum at the point. I mean, it was maximum one or two rounds in a row. So we never felt like really confident. From the beginning, it was really hard to win some rounds. And when there is a pause like this, it has to be a common effort. Like everybody's got to stay focused, not talk about small things, you know. Everybody keeps their mind on the game and try not to get angry about, yeah, PC not working, oh, my keyboard's not working. As a professional, you have to leave it on the side. That's the only possibility because if you fall in that trap, you will never get any momentum after a pause. And yeah, technical issues that happen, of course, that's part of the game and that's normal, absolutely normal. But 
the, the better team is the one that handles the most, uh, the best those situations. So yeah, we just try to keep together and say, okay, guys, we know we have a, a strong T side. We knew we had a lot of strategic is, uh, possibility. I mean, so we just kept, kept focused, and it worked in the end. And last question, gonna put you on the spot. We don't know the map yet, but obviously now Navi drops to the lower part of this group, and they're playing Copenhagen Wolves. Thoughts, and, and if you know the teams well enough, maybe uh, what you think they might veto or not veto map-wise. Well, um, the, the main issue is that Navi can have the side if they want, I think, as they are higher seed. And I see Copenhagen Wolves as a still new team, which has a potentially really um, strong city side. We, we, for example, we know, everybody knows that they are really good on Newcastle City, one of the best team out there. But I'm not, I'm not really sure if they have the weapons, the, the strategy as a T to beat Navi. It depends on the map. I don't know them enough to know which map they are really good on as a T. But I would say if Navi gets into the game and win the first five rounds, I would say they should, they should win the match because they have more potential as a T. And I don't see CPH Wolves with much possibilities as T. But maybe I'm wrong. Great. Thank you very much, Maniac. All right, folks, that's it. You've heard from Maniac. LDLC.com moves on. And now the decider match, Group B, Copenhagen Wolves and Navi. Someone's going home, someone moving forward. Back to those on fire guys. I'm on fire now. Sir Scoots, take it away, Anderson Semler. Hi, right, thank you, uh, Scoots. Uh, for that fantastic interview with that um, fantastic person, and um, yeah. you know, nothing to do with what I have in my hand right now, Andrews. Nothing at all. You know, it's just <laughs> I, I don't know where I found this. I found it outside somewhere. Mm. It was oh really? It needed to be saved. Well, and, it's well, not it going to do like any it. good in this upcoming match, but maybe later for the group of tears, it might just do anyway. All right, uh, big thanks to yeah. Scoots, of course, and you know, another reminder: we need to do more interviews in the future with Maniac because he's such a cool guy. But now we have some video of Navi outside, and obviously, uh, we don't have the audio. We're not sure what they're talking about here, but they are discussing that loss. Obviously, no, it doesn't take a genius to figure that out, mm -hmm. and um, looks like they're they're taking that really seriously. You know, they they don't want to go home yet. They have to. I mean, that's the thing. You're talking about a favorite in the group, and this after performances. Uh, that really put them on the map in recent lands. Like Na'Vi, all of a sudden they came out, they took Star Series, and then you were just like, whoa, calm down, hold on. Uh, these guys are really scary all of a sudden. They come out of nowhere and start dominating, really becoming a top force in the scene. This is not supposed to happen. Like, they are not supposed to go out of the group. It's like Nip, basically, in Group 1. You know, this is how close it is between all these teams at this point. Two French teams go through, two French teams take the first seed and leave favorites for first seed in the dust, fighting for that second seed now, versus teams that are solid but, you know, definitely less favored going into these groups. I mean, Copenhagen Wolves, we did put them as third seed, and it, I mean, it is accurate. This is definitely going to be a huge upset if they actually manage to take out Na'Vi here in this position. No doubt about that. Can't really put it any differently. Um, no, but it does bring you an uncomfortable flashback to the qualifiers of this tournament, which happened online, that we happened to be hosting as well ourselves. And, and what ended up is actually Na'Vi almost not making it. Copenhagen yeah. Wolves, in fact, qualified easier than, than Na'Vi did. They, did. they qualified one stage earlier in the qualifiers than Na'Vi ended up doing. Well, so the, we have to remember that the team that actually took Na'Vi out were London Conspiracy. Yeah. And London Conspiracy played uh, in Group uh, C. Yeah, and uh, Na'Vi ended up playing against ESG and almost lost that match too. It was, was a, there was a, really, a real chance Na'Vi were never going to be at this tournament to begin with. Now yeah. they're here and they're probably not going to want to go home just yet. And then we do have the Copenhagen Wolves lineup with Glaive sitting in the middle. Uh, he is the captain. A regular one onto his right side. We have Pimp, and then it just kind of keeps going like that. It's um, it's it is. I think this is a, a lineup that has potential to really surprise a lot of people. And for the for the same reason that I was talking about one of the other days here, which is that Danish teams they prefer to be the underdog. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's no guarantee that that's going to help them because if there was a guarantee, they would never be the underdog. That's kind of how it works by definition. Um, but. But I think they're going to be comfortable having, you know, not a lot of stress on them. No one is going to horribly blame them if they don't come out of the groups here. People are just going to say, oh, yeah, well, they're a new team. They just made it in. Not such a big deal. And that's where they do the best work, I think. Absolutely. Well, as the underdog, right? No pressure on them. They're, yeah. they're the ones who are going in. Anything is possible. All of the expectation right now is on Na'Vi. And Na'Vi, we expected them to take first seed. They didn't. Now we expect them to get through to the second seed. That's, that's pretty much how it has to go here. And in Na'Vi's minds, you can see they're also focused right now. I mean, that's what's playing through their heads. But I'm sure they're going through the band pick phase right now to determine which map we're going to be on for this best of one to settle who goes home and who will move on to the playoff bracket tomorrow. Because that's what it's all about. It's about the playoff bracket. 
What we know is that one of the strong routes of Copenhagen Wolves is going to be Nuke, but we also know for a fact that Na'Vi don't play Nuke, so they that, don't. That, that bonus that Copenhagen Wolves had is sort of instantly nullified by that but fact. That's a big, that's a good point that you bring up right now, is because Na'Vi, when we got into this group phase, they're the ones that we actually thought would have the most trouble adapting to it because they lost Train, which is definitely one of their stronger maps in the pool. Na'Vi are a team you do not want to face on Train. Yeah. Bam, that gets chopped out of the group, it gets replaced with Cash. A team that, uh, you know, a map that Na'Vi are good on, but then they get two new maps to work on as well. So Na'Vi, they don't play Nuke, they lose Train, and they get two, mo two new maps. It leaves them very few options to really perform on. Their, their bans are going to be so important going into this. Yeah, they definitely will. Oh, it's a bit of a wave to the camera down in the crowd there. Do we actually do have a lot of people down in this crowd, and, and so many that actually people trying to get into to yeah. watch more country, and there just aren't enough seats right there aren't here. aren't enough seats. Which does remind me, can we do the challenge? Because we've been sort of neck and neck with the League of Legends stream that's also going on here at Gamescom. Um, and the and yesterday we managed to actually beat their stream numbers as well. So, you know, if anyone is visiting the uh, the Global Offensive subreddit and the League of Legends subreddit, you know, maybe maybe they could put a bit of a challenge. What say if we beat them in the semis for numbers? Can we get their stage instead? It's yeah, like that an, stage official, is pretty sick. an official challenge from the Global Offensive community to the League of Legends community. Just see if we can do that. Yeah, that that's when Riot, you know, rather than then give us the stage, they nuke the stage. <laughs> <laughs> like, if we can't use it, nobody can. Well, challenge has been issued. We'll see if the if the Riot guys, who are really cool by the way, um, are gonna are gonna pick it up. I mean, obviously not. But it's fun. That it's stage fun, is right? a thing of beauty, though. Right, right now we've got a yes, great stage is. here, and this is. It has been uh, interestingly enough, actually. It's been it's been. Um, clothed on, clothed off, walled off, basically from the rest of the venue because of. Um, because yeah. of uh, basically, you know, it's like if the game is 18 plus, you have to actually. I know the camera. I, I know that's the whole point. The hat is here. The hat is present, and the hat is here to remind you all that we have two teams. They're French teams, and they took first seed in the first and second group. So, um, you know, the hat. the hat. Nothing to do with it, though. I didn't wear it. It just has to be here in the flesh, basically. It just has to be here physically to have Close that impact. By. Exactly. They knew from here to the stage. They knew that the hat was nearby. I'm wondering when we can get the map in here. Obviously taking a little bit of time to vote here, so we're just uh, we're patiently waiting. But we know Nuke is going to be out. That's really that's really no no doubt about that. Yeah, that's I that's first ban right there for Navi. There's no discussion. Copenhagen Wolves are going to be comfortable playing Inferno, but I don't think they should. But I think in their minds they're going to be like, well, Inferno is a pretty good map, especially with Glaive on the with team. With Glaive. Yeah, but I don't think that's reasonable. I think a map like Dust 2 would be genius for Copenhagen Wolves. Not because Navi are bad on it, because they're very good on it, but because that's a map where you can upset a big team. That's a momentum map, right? Yeah. That's a map that if you start actually getting a couple of those crucial rounds under your belt, you can just completely spin out of control and take over the entire thing. And have those runs where you just take nine rounds in a row. Doesn't matter which side you're on, CT side, T side, you just get control and it's so hard to stop. But it's also a map that has a little bit more of like a random element to it where you can have some pushes that are very effective. CT side, you actually have to go for some of these kinds of pushes to really throw the T side off and get those I... crucial CT rounds. But okay, it's almost like the draw. Now, okay, two. the veto. And it is going to be Dust 2. So, yeah. is it? Nuke, Mirage, Cobblestone, Cash. Yes. So, that, and this is the problem for Na'Vi, is that they had to veto Nuke, and actually that meant the random could have been uh, overpass, overpass as well. Smart play from Copenhagen Wolves to take out Mirage as well, actually. That makes a lot of sense. They don't want to play oh. Na'Vi on Mirage. They are way too good on that map. Yeah. So here we do see the CIS team, composed mainly of, uh, of Ukrainians, but also a Russian player in there somewhere, seized. Yeah. And well, Guardian as well. And Guardian from Slovakia, mm -hmm. so... Um... But, I mean, they're just monsters, this whole team. Uh, it's, I mean, and this is the kind of situation that they should thrive on, essentially. I mean, this is when they should come alive. Because online, we haven't really seen the best play from Na'Vi, but we do know that they have been focusing on their practice. And essentially, at that point, does it take the backseat for them? Na'Vi are a team that would do that. They all, all of their energy has gone into preparing for this tournament, for the second major of the year here at Gamescom. 250 grand on the line, that is everything. If you get first place, that's 100 grand in your pocket. That's a lot of money. So these teams, all of their focus, all of their attention, all of their energy has been put into preparing for this for here, for right now. I think the amount of things that have to go right for Copenhagen Wolves is, is kind of astounding. That there has to be like a whole a whole collapse of things that they need to, to work out just right. I mean, the pissed around is one thing, but that's not even the most important one. I think if they, and it looks like they're going to be standing on the CT side, which mm -hmm. I actually think is really good. If Copenhagen Wolves managed to get enough money to go for 
a double, even triple op setup. I wouldn't even mind it if they did that. This team has essentially five AWPers and not bad ones either. Nico is world well, Nico. class. Yeah. But Cajun, Pimp, Carrigan, I mean, if you look back to Carrigan's 1.6 career, definitely see there's something there. And even in Global Offensive, he is very strong with it. Oh, yeah. Do not underestimate him. So that's why I'm saying Dust 2 could be good. But to build up the economy to do that, you either have to sacrifice a lot of rounds where you end up ecoing, and that is a big risk, or you have to get a, a really perfect start. You have to get that and perfect start. You have to get that pistol in that fourth round. You yeah. get that pistol, you get that fourth round, you start getting some money in the side, and then maybe you get a SCAR 20, maybe you get a couple ops. Double op play would not be a surprise from Copenhagen Walls if they can get that fourth round. I would so. say, I would say double ops is, is that's, you know, it's like almost a 100% certainty yeah. that that's going to happen on this on this team. The question is how many they're going to go for. Yeah, is it, is it going to be what? triple off? The Penta orb set Are they going to go for, are they going to pull Hellraisers? Because Hellraisers have actually done that, like five ops in an official match. They did. Yeah. So do they do that, though? Copenhagen Wolves, they're I still in the huddle right now. They're still getting prepped. Yeah. So it's a big, big circle going can you on get, a big can you, can you read their lips, Anders? I mean, you're Danish. You know, they're Danish. Do you, can you see anything here? Well, they just said wolf. Say, I got that part. Yeah, exactly. Which is not quite the same word in Danish, but we'll... We'll, we'll let away. it slide. We'll let it slide. They are ready. The looking sank right here. They're going to need a lot. I mean, Coben, there's, we, you know, we can talk all we want about all the possibilities that, that might go into how Copenhagen Wolves could upset Navi, but they are the clear favorites here. They should win it. They should go to the quarterfinals. We'll see. We're going to see if they actually manage to do it. And they are about to ready up as well. So if you're just joining us here on the ESL stream, then a big welcome to all of you. This is the ESL 1 Cologne 2014, the third major here in Global Offensive, the second of the year, of course, but um, we are getting ready right here. I'm Anders with me, Semler. We have Vendetta on the uh, camera as well. So Scooters, the host, and tomorrow we're going to be joined by Pansy, Richard Lewis, and Tosspot, and that's mm -hmm. going to be great fun. We have all quarterfinals tomorrow, and on Sunday we have semis and grand finals, and it's going to be off the hook. Oh, it's going to be amazing. This is, I mean, it's already been a terrific tournament so far. Yesterday, just great games through and through all day long, ending in, or not ending, but before the last game, it was essentially one of the sickest comebacks we've had in CS history, C9, Cloud9 coming, coming back against Titan on this very map right here. But now we move into our fourth match of the day, second seed on the line for Group B, and one of these teams are going home. We should be ready any second now to get into the pistol round here. And Anders, I'm going to go ahead and ask you, how do you think, how important do you think it is which side you're starting on as far as this is concerned? Because, I mean, Copenhagen Wolves, yes, okay, they can go for the double-off play. Do you think Navi are happy starting on the T side, though? Yeah. I don't think Navi are worried at all right now. I don't think they're not respecting Copenhagen Wolves. They know all these players. They played against them for a long time too. So I don't think Navi are going to at all go into this feeling um, too relaxed. But I don't think they're worried either. I think they're focused on the task at hand and I, they're super professionals. I actually am very confident that Navi is going to be able to take this. Um, so I don't, I don't think Navi care if they start on one or the other side. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I think they're going to be just fine doing one way or the other. Um, um, yeah, they see they're they're definitely a team that could be comfortable on either side as well. We've seen how effective Guardian is with that AWP as well. That's the thing. That battle that we were talking about going into this, it's essentially Nico versus Guardian because we we're, we're going to think of Nico as the point man opera here. You know, despite the fact that there's so much talent on Copenhagen Wolves, it really is going to be Nico the first man to get that AWP for this team. So Navi Guardian, he's going to be the one. We saw some. I mean, he he was getting frags for Navi on Inferno, but we didn't see that that dominant performance from him with that AWP. As soon as he got it, he was missing a few shots that really should not have happened. Guardian should have been hitting those shots. So we have to see if he can bounce back here on Dust2. If he can actually figure out, okay, get back into the zone, get back into that flow, and find the frags for Na'Vi. And the thing is that on a map like Inferno, it's a little bit easier to miss some shots. On a map like Dust2, you do have uh, you have a lot more space to work with the orb. And that's something Guardian does really well. So I'm not saying, you know, normally we do see Guardian hitting those shots on Inferno, but I think there's a lot bigger chance he's going to hit them on Dust2 yeah. if it comes down to it. So, and I'm not that worried. Guardian is not a guy who just, you know, rolls over. I think actually he gets even more motivated when things start going south. So we'll have to see how it goes. They are still in the warm-up phase for about another 20 seconds, and then we should be good to go. Um, Invite your friends. We, I mean, I see posts all the time on HLTV and actually mostly on the uh, Global Offensive subreddit where people, you know, just make posts. I've never watched Counter-Strike before. I had some friends over mm -hmm. and it's the first time we did it and now we're all, you know, we're just hyped. We're doing it. Every single major tournament, we've had a huge boost in, in, in you know, spike in players. And today's going to be no different, but here it comes. Copenhagen Wolves versus Na'Vi. Best of one game. Loser goes home. Winner gets to join LDLC out of Group B 
into the quarterfinals. And the countdown has begun. We are going to get into this pistol round. Four Kevlar's picked up for Na'Vi already. Only Guardian going with nades right now. So they want to put pressure on fast, be able to take some shots. Copenhagen Wolves on, th on their side are going to be relying on nades to get the job done. Only Cajun B with Kevlar. So they are going to be really expecting to get the info on Na'Vi and then just shut them out. We already have a smoke put down on B, so that stops the rush there from Na'Vi. And Nico pushed up in the middle. Wanted to get a quick pick up on Starix, but doesn't connect with the shot, so... Missed opportunity, but nothing too much happens for it. Now just will be falling back. And Nico's actually a really, really competent pistol player as well. Something we forget a lot of the time, but he's actually very good with the pistol as well. So that's something to watch out for. Cajun gonna be grenaded down to 49. So that's a very nice grenade from Na'Vi. And so far they're playing it slowly, which is no surprise. Which is no surprise. This is Na'Vi in a nutshell. One minute left. They burned 45 seconds off the clock, but they're not gonna be too concerned by that. Honestly, Na'Vi... They will take their time and decide essentially where they're going to go based off the info that they got. They're not going to be going through mid doors though. They are gathering up for this B play. Guardian still has a smoke, but it's just going to be full on speed from here on out. And it's down to Pimp behind the big box. Yeah, great flashbang, but he can't follow up on it. He's going to go down. Starix and Seized with a very good opening into this bomb site. The idea was good for Copenhagen Wolves, but they couldn't actually execute on it. Nico going to jump down and will take down the bomb planter, but it's already down that bomb. And Nico's trapped in a corner. Going to go down. Glaive with a good shot. It's a two on three and almost gets the kill. Carrigan charging forward and will pick it up. It's now a one on two. Carrigan has to get both these kills. Just charging it. Makes it a one on one. Edward hiding in the corner. Carrigan. Did he spot him? He's going for it. Oh, shooting through. He's got one more. He's going to get it. Carrigan picks up the triple, and there's time to defuse. What an insane clutch. Don't take his finger off that button. I know you guys are hyped, but don't do it. He does it. That was such a sick clutch. And he even has the noisemaker. He even has the noisemaker. Copenhagen Wolves completely turn it around, and that is shattering for Navi. They lose the pistol. I see that, Grin Anders. You needed to bring something Danish with you, man. I brought the hat. Where, where, where's your where's your where's your pack of bacon? I brought myself. <laughs> <laughs> and that's enough. I don't know what that was. That was unfortunately Navi. They ended up doing something a little bit silly then, and that, that they should not have lost that round. They really shouldn't. That was so far in the bag that they should have been able to hold on to it. Great movement by Carrigan, and no fear at all. Give him credit for that. But if Navi had played that one correctly, they they shouldn't have lost it, yeah. even in a one on two. Even in a one-on-two, that should have been Navi's round. And they actually follow up on it with two armors, two AKs, and a scout as well. They're ready to fight. They want to put Copenhagen Wolves right back down, and that could very likely happen. Well, we saw how effective they were versus uh, LDLC at the beginning of the first half. I mean, this is it. It turned into a real all-out brawl. Smoke is going to go down to cut off CT. He's getting a little bit of a warm uh, welcome there from Glaive, putting shots through. Navi have yet to run past, however. They're really taking their time with this, and now they decide to commit. It is going to be the B-slow play, and we have two guys holding Cajun B, solid on the side, trying to crowd but they hunt him down. Yeah, and look at this season. Seuss putting in great work, and the rest of the Copenhagen Wolves should actually not commit to retaking this. Not even close. Just save this, these rifles you have and walk away from it, because you're not going to be able to do it anyway. They do have the kits, but it doesn't matter. You can't retake the B bomb side three on five unless uh, Navi just start doing really silly things, and they've waited already long enough for it to not be happening. So. Really, really nice execution from Navi. They made it work perfectly. Yeah, Guardian very quick to get out across the map as well. Like, they know exactly what's happening here, Navi. They do not want to let Copenhagen Wolves hold on to these guns. They want to make absolutely sure that they make Copenhagen Wolves eco in the next round. But the crossfire is set up on long. This made things a little bit tricky here for Navi. Starks get boosted up. He gets boosted up from Element. And Kerrigan with the mad spray. Starx is still going to go down. That 5 7 is murderous. Yeah, and they will not be able to save all the rifles. Only the one from us here, so Seuss making it work. And that's worth all the investment for Navi. Getting that one extra kill in there makes the big difference. And Copenhagen Wolves, they decide to force it up in turn. Say, all right, you're gonna, you're gonna try and surprise us. We'll just do the same thing back. And we've seen this, we've seen this before happen in a lot of games. And what, what ends up happening is the, the team that eventually forces the other team to eco, where there's no choice. That is the team that has a great first half. So this is a big gamble on both sides to see if they can make it work. I do actually love watching these two teams that, uh, duel it up with the scouts as well. It's just uh, it's acrobatics, jumping through the air because the scout is accurate 100% in the air like that. If you draw, if you at the t at the peak of your uh, leap or whatever. So Guardian and Nico going toe to toe. Guardian just jumping all over the place. Nobody really doing any damage to each other, but still getting information as far as how many had gone over to B. As far as Navier is concerned, they want to know how many defenders have moved into the B site, how many have gone back towards A. All that information is crucial, and Guardian's going to be communicating that to his teammates the entire time. Zeus 
What? Oh, and Cat just one nade and then backs off. But how? Okay, so that DNA, did it do damage to Karen? Yeah, okay, it did damage. I just thought it looked like it should have done even more then, but still really good grenade. Kevlar, Kevlar saves. Yeah. That that actually might have just killed Kerrigan outright if, Ke if Kerrigan didn't have Kevlar. Cajun does get the first kill here, takes down Seized, and they have got a couple of people defending inside here, and the backup is coming quick. Now we need to put some speed on it, but Pimp with the pistol takes down Edward. Now we are they gonna crumble here? Starix is almost dead, it's a two on three now, as they do bring down the one guy, Guardian, putting in a lot of work at the moment. But can they get the bomb down? 24 seconds. Not committing to it yet. Navi want to win this round. They're waiting to see if they can't get a pick. If Copenhagen Wolves are going to get antsy and try and push in here before time. 15 seconds left. They're approaching that 10 second mark. There's no longer any room here, but Guardian takes the kill on Glaive. And there's missed shots from Nico. Eight seconds. They just need to keep the pressure up. Copenhagen Wolves, they're going to burn the clock. And there you go. Both kills come through. Kerrigan and Nico splitting at 1 1. And they managed to put Navi back on the foot. Oh, well, back on their back feet right there. Off balance. And, and look at this, the pattern continues. Navi say, no, sir, we're not going to eco. We're going to keep doing this. They buy AKs once again, and it can work. Again, if uh, Copenhagen Wolves win this round, I think they're going to have such a good first half. But if they lose it, then it's Navi's turn to, to potentially do the same thing. What a crazy start to this game. This is, this is brutal. It's no longer sexy Counter-Strike, as Red Eye would have said. This is... Um, this is definitely down and dirty. This is dirty. This is a game of chicken right now, is what this is. Basically, who's going to break first? Who's going to flinch and turn away and be forced be to eco? Exactly. So this this is very brutal now. But C's not having the best start here. Takes one to the face. So he's down to 12 HP already at the beginning. Waiting to see exactly where Navi decided to take this through, however. As Nico is holding from CT, there is a very solid 2-1-2 setup here for Copenhagen Wolves. So they're kind of prepared. It's like a kind of catch-all um, setup that we have from Copenhagen Wolves, just trying to cover as much ground as possible. They leave Cat open, but they focus on Long instead on the A site. So that's not a problem for the Wolves. If they leave Cat open, it's all right. Yeah. So long as they can hold on to Long. Yeah, but the big problem is normally, if this wasn't hadn't, hadn't been such a confusing round, maybe Glaive would have had an AWP here, and this hold would be infinitely better. For Mars, it can still work, but it's, it's tricky. And actually, Na'Vi are going to go for the split instead of the straight uh, cat push. And I think this is a good idea. This is a good idea from Na'Vi, but now, I mean, they're kind of walking into the defense here. Kerrigan is going to be the point man. He's on the edge of the pit as well, so as soon as he spots somebody, he can drop right back. He stands his ground, goes for the throw, he does not get the kill, and Glaive walks in and gets overwhelmed as well. Na'Vi, I mean, not as Vincera walking onto this side as if they own the place. Yeah, easy crunch coming out from them, and Copenhagen Wolves, yeah. I think that, I think unfortunately that Famas on long meant they should have probably just put two players in pit and gone for a retake if that's what they really wanted. But um, good egg headshots coming from Na'Vi, really hard to deal with that. And it's going to be right back. They force it up again and it works. And Copenhagen Wolves this time around, uh, I've, if they save these two rifles, probably they will, they will do the counter force again. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure they're going to be allowed to. No. Hey, this is, uh, let's take a look at the money real quick again, just to see. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves are a bit hard pressed here. Guardian's gonna find one, but Pimp returns, takes out Starks, and it will be the end. Yeah. So only one man so going down for Navi as well. That's even better here, but yeah, the game of chicken, Navi win it. And Copenhagen Wolves, they really have no option but to eco here. And they should eco for two rounds. The thing is, we have to remember, this is a T-sided map. Navi should come out ahead in the rounds. Copenhagen Wolves, it's still so early on in the half that, yeah, sure, okay, they eat two ecos, but then they buy up with the ops. They buy up with all the fun toys, and they get their opportunity to turn it around here. I definitely hope that that's the plan for the Danish team. It, it should be the plan. Hope they're not going to get too um, too anxious here and, and, and try and buy in the upcoming round. Play it cool. But Navi's going to be careful. They are against C-Set 75s, and they can't get too complacent, too happy about the fact that they won that round, because you never know what happens then. Cajun is right here on the edge, up on short. And Glaive actually in the middle with a bit of a Noah Tower, as the Vendetta would have said. They do take down C's, and good return from Guardian, though. Nicely done. I do like the push coming out from Longhouse. However, that's going to be Cajun B trying to wrap around. And he gets caught immediately. No, it is Kerrigan, my mistake. And getting caught immediately is not going to help things. I mean, he gets information, sure. And you have Nico now trying to push through the house to get the flank. But it's all going to be down to Cajun B, who's alive on CT slope. Going to be able to make it around the corner? I think not. Guardian and Zeus double team him. And that's going to be Navi once again making their way onto this A site. Pretty much scot free. Oh, him with a bit of a shot there. And Starry staying alive when he shouldn't. That was a, a big opportunity that they could have had there just to save an AK or something like that. So that's a little bit unfortunate for, uh, for Copenhagen Wolves. That should have definitely been a kill. 
Uh, sixth round is coming up here, and uh, they should be ecoing once more. In fact, they will be, so that's a good sign, I think. But Guardian making sure that if anything does happen, he does have the AWP. So by the time Copenhagen Wolves have one, he's going to be ready for it. Exactly. We can already see him trying to shape up at mid doors. The smoke has already gone down, though, so he doesn't even get information. And, and the reason why that smoke goes down is based, and in that position as well is because Copenhagen Wolves, they know they're not going to be peaking. They know they don't have a scout or anything like that to make uh, to try and pick Guardian off with, so they just want to deny Navi completely all the information as to how many people are going over to B, because guess what? They had a stack, a stack on A. They don't even manage to get a kill, though. Despite a great flash on Edward, he still lives, and Glaive needs to find the shot, the final frag, and he gets it just around the corner. So picking up just the one, and Zeus could be going down. Nice work from Glaive at the moment, but I'm not sure it's going to be quite enough. He's alone, and he will be going down to Guardian at the very end. But they managed to take a few rifles away and also just, you know, show themselves that they can they can easily kill these Navi members if they put it right. There's one, there's two, and that's going to be the double up setup as predicted at the, you know, before we even saw what map it was. Mm -hmm. That's what you could really expect from Copenhagen was a, a very curious composition of players, but in a way also kind of... Well, they have so much talent on this team as far as the ops are concerned. Guardian, he sees three guys go by. Not a, not, a, not a flick, and he really is expecting the crouch to come in, but I like that Copenhagen Wolves are deciding to change up the angle. Instead, they wait to see if anybody's going to be peeking out at top mid with a boost here at the bottom doors. Kate, Nico has managed to pick a man off already to start, so there's the entry frag for Copenhagen Wolves. Now we have to see if they're actually going to get the opportunity to pick somebody off top mid as well with this double op setup. So they they boosted Nico up on short, and that's a, sort of a little bit of a trick play. And then they also do the, the boost down the middle, so they don't just like go for one you know trap. They have like a double thing going on. And that's really annoying, obviously. Down in the pit, uh, Guardian has managed to sneak his way down. Is Nico going to be aware? This is, I think, a pretty good position from Guardian. Nico goes down. Guardian gets the shot through the box as well. And now it's back to a four on four. That's unforgiving. Cajun goes for a flick, expecting the man on the box. Not going to hit the shot, though. And I think now... the tank sees through. And there's... then a follow-up grenade brings, brings him down to 12. So a little bit of damage done, but not the kill. The problem is right now is that there's only Kerrigan alive on this site, and now he's about to get sandwiched in. He's got guys moving up on long. He gives away his position by shooting at Cat. They should be able to walk right in here and clean it up completely. Navi, very nice work there on the A site, just splitting it up. Kerrigan exposed completely. Nowhere to go. Two on four, and they're going to go for saving the one orb they have left. The other one lost in the A bomb site. So they can't really do anything about that. And that was... That was a round that was basically decided by Guardian down on long, just covering the angle and making sure that um, that they couldn't, they, they had to stay in a weird position in that A-bomb side, because otherwise they're going to get picked off from long. Now, Cajun does manage to get the parting shot on Edward there, so it's only going to be three surviving members here for Na'Vi. Or at least it should be, although they may try and hunt here. If, if Na'Vi can get in here and get one of these guns off of the Copenhagen Wolves members, this would be very nicely done here, because Na'Vi have plenty of money to rebuy. Copenhagen Wolves are the ones who are hard-pressed. They have no cash. No, but they've lost a couple of rounds in a row, so I wouldn't be surprised if they try and force up with Formasas or something on the rest just to just to keep themselves going in this first half. Otherwise, if they don't, they should definitely commit to trying and saving these two rifles. So just, I mean, put the rifles somewhere together, and I would almost say make sure the pistols are close by too. Let's say Guardian, right side. He got that information, but he tags him to, through the door cage and dropped down to 20 HP already. Guardian is dominant. Good damage dealt to Edward, who's going to get out of the house but not get the kill. Seized will get the refrag, however. So the momentum continues here for Na'Vi as they have now worked the man out, looking towards that A site on long. But Cajun B is now in position with his AWP looking. He's look, he's hunting for Seized. He knows he has to be there. Yeah, got, got elevated up by... Uh by that boost they had going on here. And he's looking for one more shot. Can't kill Guardian down in the pit. And Guardian repeats and takes him down. And you have to wonder now how many times that Copenhagen Wolves going to try and go for that peak down on Long. They either need to keep Long in that case, or they need to leave Guardian alone down there. They need to just, yeah, stop facing Guardian, basically. Guardian is just way too good. Great flash, but then Glaive runs out of time and seized with the spray, takes him out. Guardian gets another frag on Nico, and Pimp is going to be the last man standing here for Copenhagen Wolves. One of the two rifles that they needed to save this round, Pimp has it in hand, and he's, he's, he's about as far away on, from this side as he can get. But Copenhagen Wolves, no real hope for them that round, basically. They were just looking to get the damage done and maybe save the guns. But in the end, it was an anti-eco in the end for Na'Vi. So Na'Vi with another four members alive. Na'Vi's money has to be getting out of control now as well. So that's that's got to be really scary. They're starting to crack that 10k mark. Yeah, so they, they have plenty of cushion. Not looking good. Pimp 
They are getting closer, and that bomb is only going to explode in a few seconds here. So they have a little bit of time to find him too. He's hurt them already. And they're checking. They're coming up from behind as well. Pimp is going to get the one kill here, but they can still find him. Two seconds, and he's alive. He's not going to be surviving the round. Seized will take him down. And that's a triple, I think, from Seized in that round. So nicely done. Six and two. And we're moving into the ninth round, where they can only buy one AWP. That's not too bad, but... Um, they could have bought two. They could have bought three if they wanted to. That's the thing. It seems like Copenhagen Wolves was going through their heads now. It's like, okay, well, we tried the shenanigans. We tried the double off. That didn't work. Let's just go for full nades, rifles, and get Nico. You know, just let Nico take point with the AWP. So a bit more bread and butter play coming out here for uh, Copenhagen Wolves at this point. And a really strong long hold. So yeah. what we were just talking about in the previous round is that when, when Guardian gets out on long and down and pit, really bad things happen to that A-bomb site. So now they've decided, all right, we're definitely going to try and hold long or at least hold, you know, all the way up to the A-slope if we can. Mm -hmm. Good choice. It's a strong choice. I mean, the, the key to holding A site for Copenhagen Wolves for any CT site, basically, is either control long or you control cat. Doing it by halves isn't going to help them, but this this is a great push coming into Upper Dark right now from Copenhagen Wolves. This is getting them so much information from that B side. They now know that Upper Dark is clear. Lower Dark, they're waiting to see, but they aren't even going to peek in. They're in a great position to flank Navi if they ever come through here. But is Navi going to execute before the Wolves can make anything off it? Zeus goes down, surprisingly. Glaive looking the wrong way. And feels like they do uh, want to go for the A-bomb side again. It's been working so far, so why wouldn't they? They got the bomb up there on the catwalk, and Pimp is going to pick off Edward. Starix gets the kill on Glaive. But I think Copenhagen Wolves have a pretty good position right now. Starix actually all the way in T-spawn takes down Pimp. And now it's a three-on-three. -three. Cajun going to get a free kill here on Starix. Go for a second one, and will drop Seized. And uh, Guardian is left alone, and they just have to not face him. Just leave him. 20 seconds. They yeah. can just leave him alone. Nico holding the angle. Guardian actually taking a bit of nade damage there, but the smoke is down. He's got the CZ, and he gets the kill! Guardian's got the bomb now. 14 seconds. He can get onto this site. Kerrigan is just around the corner, though. He's on slope. Kerrigan has to just run straight through. There's no option here. Guardian has to put this bomb down as quickly as possible. Five seconds. He goes for the fake. Are you kidding, Guardian? Two seconds. One second, and he gets caught. Guardian wanted to win the round, and he tried to go for the play. It could have almost worked, and it was really, really impressive running through the smoke. See, he set 75 in hand, but it's also as much down to Copenhagen Wolves not respecting it at the end. They should have, and they could have just left him alone, and the time alone would have, would have sealed that deal. Uh, that was huge. That was huge. They're still doing a lot of damage to the Copenhagen Wolves. We can see a couple of them are rocking Famasas right now. Cajun B limited on nades. So they are still hard pressed here, Copenhagen Wolves, despite that win. But this also resets their, mo their lost money. So trying times here for the Danes. They need to get a couple more rounds on the board here before they start feeling comfortable with this half. Say they at least need six, at least six rounds. I think even more than that, to be honest. I think if, if they can get up to <laughs> seven or eight, I think that's when they start feeling a little bit comfortable. But they are playing Navi. They need a hell of a lot more than you normally would maybe here. Nico doesn't get the shot. He's going to try and fall back and will flash himself back. Oh, but he's going to get caught. Seuss not posing for a second. Keeps pushing up here, and that's a huge opening to the A-bomb side. And we've seen what Navi can do already once this happens. Uh, Kerrigan is managing to sneak past, however, on a slope. Just goes for the random spray. Not going to get anything. That Molotov is going to force him out into the open, though. Navi, they're, they're facing a firing squad on CT slope. Two members there, but they all get caught. Edward Starks, Guardian, all getting frags on this. And Navi for what looked like a very, well, a very precarious position. They actually made it work. And now the Wolves are echoing. So they won a round, they lost a round, and that is going to be... Now this first half is very close to being completely lost, I think, for Copenhagen Wolves. Now we're very, very close to it being uh, almost impossible because they're going to be... It, I mean, one, if they decide to buy with the next round, they're going to have Famasas mostly to buy with. So if they double eco now, that could put Na'Vi at 9-3. But and I still think they should. I mean, they should. They should. And then win the remaining three rounds. But if you're putting it all on flawless play throughout the rest of the half, when you've already had quite a bit of trouble dealing with Navi to begin with, I mean, close rounds some, but still, Navi seem to be getting more and more confident as they go through this. I mean, with with Guardian going for a play like that, that's confidence, right? So, Navi really seem to be in the driving chair and in the driving seat right now. Excuse me, something in my eye all of a sudden. And ultimately. Um 
you know, so much of this comes down to all the, the, the back and forth that was happening in the beginning, as Coben Hagenwolves could have potentially ended up in a situation where they had a 3-0 lead instead of that weird 2-2 position we ended up in. Pistols here, connecting with Edward and Glaive actually, still doing nice work. Gets some time to reload and goes to work on Zeus before Guardian finally ends it. Pimp, can you find Starix with a grenade out? That'd be huge. It's the Glaive 2000 at work. Bomb is about to get planted on the A site, though. Good thing that Cajun B is here. He's even got a Molly. This is a perfect Molotov. This is going to force Guardian out into the open, and Cajun B jumps on the opportunity, does not miss his chance. He can defuse. He can just go for the defuse right here. Actually, but that Molotov's blocking him. It's planted. Oh, the Molly! It's not going to kill him in time, though. Is it going to kill him in time? He doesn't have time. He comes off the bomb. Oh, Cajun! Oh, no. Starix! Molotov! Oh, he gets the kill, and then it's denied. Instant karma coming right back the on him. The counter molly. Yeah, with a kit that would have been perfect. Without a kit, it took a little bit too long. 8-3. And nearly an eco round win from Copenhagen Wolves. That would have been one of the golden moments and they forced it up here and that's what I said I think they shouldn't have done. They yeah. go try for it. They go for it. Nico attempting to, to pick off Guardian to start with that scout. Pimp getting legged as he crosses towards B as well. That's not going to help things here for Copenhagen Wolves. The rest of the Copenhagen Wolves members once again going towards that double, double looking towards long, one kind of floating in CT spawn towards mid, right? They're trying to get a feel and basically listen. Glaive's position right now, he can listen if there's anybody moving up cat. Although if they get to that position, they're practically already on the A site. So he, he might want to get a little bit closer just to see if he can get any kind of info as far as just big box at mid and action at mid doors. So Navi's been doing so well at the A bomb site for a long time, so it's almost a little bit frustrating to see them going B now. So I mean, it could work, but uh, it seems to me like if, if A keeps working, why not just keep doing it? Yeah. They do have Pimp, who's very low in this bomb site, so that could be uh, one of the weak points here. Smoke goes off, Pimp from us out too late, and they're only going to get the one kill from Cajun there. The timing, unbelievable from Navi. One second later and Pimp would have been in position to actually maybe kill someone there. I think maybe you're right though. I think you hit it right there though. It's the fact that Guardian managed to leg one of the guys going over to B. And when you're, co when you're going off of information, if you don't get the tag, you get the leg still, that's going to factor in and think, well, we just actually have to kill like one and a half guys here on this site because the other guy, most likely, if we can't nade him into oblivion, we're sh we should be able to take him in a fight. No kit on the Danish side. They're going to have to fall back. And they have saved an AK, which is good news, but uh, there's not enough here. I don't think so. Navi are going to be out on the hunt now as well. They have to realize exactly what Copenhagen Wolves are up to. They need to keep the pressure on Copenhagen Wolves. So you can see them spreading out across this map. They just leave the bomb entirely. I mean, there's not going to be enough time for it to be defused. Navi, get into CT spawn. Don't find anybody. Guardian has still got his AWP though, so he's able to hold on to that sniper rifle. And he should be able to actually have a pretty decent spawn for mid at least. We'll see where exactly where he decides to take it though. And not really anything crazy as far as the spawn right now. No long spawn, kind of a B spawn actually, if they really wanted to go for a rush, but... But that's not generally what no, Navi do, not, right? not what Navi do, right? Oh, oh, there we go. Guardian, mid-air, leaving no chance for Cajun to, to make that crossover. And Copenhagen was also slacking on the smoke. They just decided, nope, we're not going to do it. And you could do that against a lot of people, but doing it against Guardian is almost asking for trouble. Yeah, yeah, Guardian is not going to miss many of those shots. Like, he, he legs pimped the round before, and then he manages to get the shot this time. Like, Guardian, once he starts getting that flow, where he starts hitting those shots round after round, that's when it starts to get to be a real problem dealing with him. And Navi, now they've got a man advantage going into this crucial round for Copenhagen Wolves, because again, Copenhagen Wolves, they've never really had stable money since that fourth round, or since that third round. Well, essentially, since the very beginning of this half, man. You know, they, they just have not had stable money to work with. So once again, if they were to lose this round right here, that forces them right back into eco or just mixed by scenarios. And it's always going to make Navi's job a little bit easier. And that's really giving Navi that edge and that confidence. Every time, you know, they know they're going into FAMASs or limited nades and Edward is able to walk in and pick off Kerrigan at will. Yeah, and a second kill comes in on Nico and this is completely falling apart for, for Copenhagen Wolves this first half. There were some signs that they could have made it work, but it is, it's now looking like Navi have just switched into a completely different gear. And as you said, they keep being in this awkward position where they but they only have a third of the equipment that they really need. Yeah. And yeah, that's the problem with force buying. That's the most important bit. Once you start force buying, then your money is, I mean, you're looking at your money, it goes up and down, up and down across the board for the different players. That's not a good situation to be in. Glaive is, I mean, he's standing his ground right now. He nearly gets two, he does in fact get two. 
So that's going to be good. I mean, he gets uh, Navi to spend some money, but Navi, like, they have the bank right now. They don't really yeah. care about yeah, uh, has, spending money. Even if Navi had lost all rifles, if, you know, if Glaive had killed everyone, but then he died to a grenade or something afterwards, that would have still been worth it for Navi. Yeah. They did no longer care about losing money at all. AWP picked up on Glaive. It's a glass cannon version, so no armor for him. Let's see if they are going to smoke it off. They still just, in, they're really insistent on making this jump without the smoke, which seems to me like not a good idea. Guardian going for flicks. Edward finds the headshot on Nico. Glaive will pick off Guardian, though, with that AWP. Edward looking for another shot on Kerrigan. He decides to back off, though. Trades places with Zeus. And is the hand of God, is it here? Crossfire is over at long. Navi are out on it. They're taking this fight. The smoke is down. That's it. Edward standing his ground. He gets taken out by Cajun B. They realize that Zeus is in the corner as well. Four and three looking a little bit better for Copenhagen Wolves. If they can t finish 10-5, Still some sort of chance in this, but it's not going to be easy at all. Zeus moving up, and Carrigan trying to make the jump here, see if he can catch anyone. He does spot one, and quickly ducks back for cover. Oh, smart play. Now Copenhagen Wolves maintain the man lead. Don't take any unnecessary peaks. Carrigan, he's just kind of dancing around. This is a very hard shot for Zeus to hit. So Carrigan not taking a huge risk by doing it. Just making sure that they still have tabs on where Zeus is on this map. 40 seconds left, and Na'Vi, they're starting to bring the bomb out to Long. Starx is here to support Zeus. Kerrigan still jumping, still knows, and as soon as Zeus commits, Kerrigan steps up and misses a huge opportunity. Zeus gets the headshot, but that should have never happened. Cajun B actually has to come back in here and patch that up. But Sazed is now onto the site. Cajun B has to worry about getting flanked. 25 seconds and the bomb is all the way down top of mid, so this round is actually lost. There's nothing Seize can do any longer to try and get it happening, but he can still take rifles away from Copenhagen Wolves, and they need all of them at the moment. I don't think 10-5 is enough of a scoreline for Copenhagen Wolves. I'd be hugely impressed if they can make that work somehow. Seize is going to take Cajun away, and then Glaive holds on to the orb at least. So even then, Navi is still proving a little bit dangerous here. Uh, Navi, they have they have a great score so far. If they can finish this half 11-4, it's going to be very difficult for Copenhagen Wolves to do anything at all. Even 10-5 is a bit too close for comfort here for Copenhagen Wolves. Like they need they need six rounds and at look least. At the, look at the terrorist side. Three orbs down the middle out there, not smoking enough. We've seen this before. So when they make the crossover, could be dangerous. Instant trade here, as uh, Nico goes for the for the you know firing squad. Three people waiting for him. Oh, there's the flash peak again, and Guardian gets caught. Glaive. That's a fast one. That's a, Smith, a Smith's yeah. flash right there from Titan. Smith's love to do that. Throws a flash, crouch at the door, and just peek. And Guardian was aim aiming high. He wasn't aiming towards where Smith's usually peeks from. Zeus is sort of weirdly trapped by the blue container over here, but I'm not sure they realize he's there. Grenade it does do a little bit of damage to Edwards. That's pretty good news, but Carrigan has switched up his position. And last time he was in pit, and Zeus, you can tell his focus is actually kind of down towards that pit. He's thinking, oh, there must be someone down there. But there isn't. And yeah. Kerrigan hears this running back. That's good. This is a lot of auditory information. I mean, if you can hear it right now, Edward is trying to face Cajun B down at mid, but that's not a good idea when the AWP is there and Cajun has already got two kills with it. Or no, that's Cajun's first. It's Glaive with the two kills, but still. Damage is done. Seized is trying to sneak his way out. But this is all going to be like sneaky beaky like basically for Navi. They need to try and catch somebody off guard from Copenhagen Wolves, but it's just not happening. There's one great kill from Seized, but then the man is too close at window. Cajun misses the shot. Now is a golden opportunity. The bomb is going to make its way through upper dark now. 25 seconds, two on three. They know definitely the bomb is coming here, so the rotation is already happening, and they're going to put two people up a dark from Copenhagen Wolves. I do like this play. It's going to really catch Navi off guard, I think. One guy's going to be planting. I mean, sees this covering from every which angle, and they should spot him. They do spot him behind that big box. He'd take him down. Glaive, triple kill, and the round is one. We'll make it 10-5. But actually, this kind of round that we just saw, I think a lot of rounds could have been like this for Copenhagen Wolves. Oh, it's more cowbell. More cowbell, Anders. Ridiculous, but also fun. I love it. That's, that reminds me of old end faculty, right? Over in Copenhagen Games, right? They had that little, that, that obnoxious wood clacker that yeah. spins around the stick, right? Just clack, 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 clack. Every time they went around, that thing would go off and they just start shouting. Looks like they found a way to one up it, though. So count on the Danes. <laughs> to find a way to have an annoying after-round win ceremony. Yeah, on behalf of my country, I do, I do apologize for, the, for that. But it is good fun. It's definitely very entertaining. I'm not surprised. We're going to be going into the second half soon enough, guys, with a 10-5 lead for Na'Vi. I mean, Nico and Pimp on four kills each for a whole first half. That's already good enough. You can see that Glaive and Cajun and Carrigan have been doing just fine on their own. So actually, I mean, 
the fact is, this this could have been like a 7-8 game. This could have even been, I think, 8 rounds in favor of Copenhagen Wolves if uh, just a few things have been different. So 10-5 looks like really Navi signed it, and it is. But um, overall, it could have been uh, quite a different first half we had on our hands here. I still think this is enough for Navi to take the victory, though. This should be. I mean, Navi, if they win the pistol round, it's going to be really hard to get rid of them after that. I mean, Zeus looking very focused right now, Guardian looking. I like to see this is much more conversation already going on between the Navi players than uh, what we saw versus LDLC on Inferno. And that, and that during the breaks, like Navi were not talking to each other. Like there just wasn't, there wasn't any commu communication going on. Whereas now it seems like they're a bit higher spirits here, but the time is ticking down. We're about 20 seconds away from getting into this second half. And this is invaluable time now for both teams to go over what the game plan is in this pistol round that's coming up here to start off the second half. Copenhagen Wolves, we need to look to them. And a lot of pressure on this man here, Nico to really step up his game and start picking up some frags, getting the opportunity. <clears throat> yeah, getting them back in the game would be huge at the moment, just because, if, if nothing else, if Pimp and Nico get a little bit of confidence, really start stepping up their game, that's going to that's gonna be two more players, essentially, playing for, for Copenhagen Wolves. That's, a, that's obviously pretty important at this point. 16th round is coming up, so we'll come back to the second half. Loser of this match gets knocked out of the tournament. The winner are going to join LDLC out of the group in Group B here. They're just going to get rid of it, actually. This, this opens up some options. With the smoke at mid like that very quickly, Navi are going to now wonder exactly what's going to be happening in mid. Is it going to be fast short? They, they're limited in information here, Navi, basically. But before that smoke down, they can see that smoke's down. They can kind of get an idea if they spot a T side. But oh. this is this is why Starks is having to push up here. If he can actually get the info at Long House, he's going to get overwhelmed. Though Pimp lands the shot. This is not looking good here. Zeus caught before he can get back around the corner as well. That might go down in history as the worst reload we've seen, at least so far in the tournament from uh, from Starry's there. That was very painful to watch because if he hadn't been reloading, he probably at least got the first kill with the headshot there. Bomb is going to go down. It's 5-1-3. And Na'Vi, even if they lose the first round, I still think they're going to be able to win. But obviously, you don't want to give any room for any kind of nonsense here. They want to try and retake this with three members charging up Catwalk. They do have a kit. They even have a couple of grenades and smokes here. A look at Cage, and he, this is on a timer here. Navi need to get kills very fast. Pimp knows that he's got a teammate flanking on Cat. That Navi have to turn around, and that sets it up. We can see it right there. Nico with two. Cajun gets one, but that was about as clean as it gets for Navi. A little, a little wink from Lady Luck with the timing there from Starks to go for his reload. That was definitely unfortunate for him. I mean, it could not have been at a worse time to reload. Basically, when Copenhagen Wolves are about to push out from Long House like that. <laughs> yeah, that was unfortunate if, if I've ever seen, uh, you know, a really, really bad reload. I think that was definitely it. 17th round is coming up now, 6-10. And Nico and Carrigan also picking up an, uh, an MP7 here. But Nico with the Glock is no surprise. That's really classic Nico. And he used to walk around and get a bunch of kills just with a Glock. But that was before people started buying body armor, although Navi don't have any. They're just completely naked almost. And Carrigan racking up the kills. 1,200 bucks in his pocket. He's going to be pleased about that. That makes that worthwhile, definitely. This means that you know they can get some uh, get, they can get some options going. Drop that off, get it a little bit faster. Make sure that they guarantee it. Not a problem. Guardian with the deagle, not really finding too many opportunities to put it to use, as that is about as clean as it gets going onto that B site now for Copenhagen Wolves. They get to just kind of set up shop and hold on to the guns that they have. Zeus is looking to get one off of Nico, but again, Nico's only got the Glock, and he's instantly going to give Zeus. Could go for another one here as well. Guardian doing his best with that Deagle. Drops him down to 10 HP. They have to reload. And <laughs> Kerrigan with the MP7 gets another frag. That's three SMG kills in one round. That's that's best case scenario for an SMG buy. That's you why you buy that gun. Did you see the cheek on Nico? He knew Guardian was reloading and he would get the reload faster. So he just he didn't even duck. He just kept facing and staring him in the eye, saying, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this magazine in just one second before you do, and that'll be the end. <laughs> it was Kerrigan who got the kill, but that was definitely a bit of a standoff there. Just mentally anyway. 18th round is coming up. 10-7 is the scoreline. Flashbang out onto a long and Copenhagen Wolves trying to make it happen. Again, Carrigan with the MP7 getting more and more and more money on his side. Great grenade as well to finish off Starrix. That's filthy rich. That's another 1,200 in his pocket this round alone. Yeah, Carrigan has 5,000 when everyone else is at about three. Yeah, yeah that's, that sounds about right. That's disgusting. Best case scenario, but let's see here. Another two frags go his way. Copenhagen Wolves, I mean, again, they should be able to walk their way out here. They may know that Seized is around this corner, and that's the that's the problem here with this Seized at 75. Seized is with, well within lethal range. If he goes for the spray, he could get the kill, but Glaive is going to react faster and get the headshot on him. Now down to Edward. Last man alive, USPS in hand. His trusty USPS. Two guys very low. Three guys low, in fact, on Copenhagen Wolves. This could be an opportunity for him to try and get a parting shot or two. 
Definitely had some choices and targets here if he's going to go for it. Pimp. Oh, if he kept walking. Now Grenade reigns in here and Edward's been found. Cajun will take him down. That's unfortunate. This he might have got a couple of kills, I agree. So now we're at 10-8. And now Navi can buy. And it's going to be the one up here on Guardian. No big surprise. And there's one on Nico. And there's one on Nico, exactly. So what exactly is the play here for Navi? Do, do they decide to go for anything to change it up? Smoke at mid, push in the lower dark. Aggression at Longhouse. Do they try and change up the pace as far as holding here? Both of them sneak on past Tower, so that's nicely done there. Nico not really reacting in time to get a pick or even a tag. So Copenhagen Wolves, all they have is the information. Two guys at B. Now they have to figure out what the setup is across the rest of the map here. Do Navi hold aggressive on Long? Do they hold aggressive on Cat? Now how are they setting this up? But Copenhagen Wolves, they're not interested in really puzzling things, puzzling over things. They're just going to go ahead and rush straight up B slow. And Edward gets a kill. Maybe he shouldn't have got Sush. Again, he's going to take down one more player. He's at the back of the side. Still holding strong, but they do pick up Seized. Sorry, that was Seized in the back there. Sush got a kill from Smoke, which is not at all bad. The bomb goes down three on three. Now we really do need to win this round. It's, it's not a comfortable position for them now if they start losing. That could equalize the score. Grenade is going to be really well timed, and Seuss is down to 62. And they've got one guy coming up, but look at where Copenhagen Wolves are holding up her. This is so tricky. Nico, does he check? Starks is trying to do 180s. As you can see, he's just looking, trying to have eyes in the back of his head. And, and that it's seals not going to do it. They run instantly when that happens. So credit to Nico. I mean, Nico and Pimp really had a, a, a horrible first half. They doubled their kills already in the second half compared to what they had in the first half. They're at 8-8. Eight, eight. And we're looking at a 10-9 scoreline with the two rifles safe here. That's good news, especially because one of them is the Obon Guardian. So yeah. it's not all over. It's definitely not all over for Navi. Getting the hype train going right now. That's Kerrigan with his cowbell. And this is, I mean, they are one round away now from evening things up. Navi, they have to, well, do they force, do they not? They got the two guns, but there isn't that much money left on the other team. They are going to do it, though. They're just going to spend everything. Go for broke. Navi, well, Guardian actually has an AWP, but Nico gets the tag on Seized, drops him down to eight HP through the door. Uh, it's very close, dangerously close, but it's not a kill just yet. And you still have to worry about Guardian being up on short here. Actually, it's going to be over on Long. Astaris is going to pick up the first kill there onto Pimp. And now just uh, a really good opening here for Copenhagen Wolves. But I'm, as long as Guardian is up here, I'm not going to I'm not going to get too excited. No, he's he's far too good at playing these positions, as we saw on the on their T side for Navi. He just kept getting pick after pick towards this A site. Now we have to see if he can return the favor, or rather just change it up and keep that flow going on his CT side here. Copenhagen Wolves, however, slowly sneaking their way out long, and Guardian has changed up his position. Now he's going to be holding from Cat. He's, he could potentially get flashed here as they try and attempt to cross Copenhagen Wolves, but Copenhagen Wolves are just sneaking their way up, and I like this. Navi decide to put the focus on Cat. They need to stay alive at this point and play for the retake, but it's not going to happen. Pimp finds Guardian before he can get the safety, and Kerrigan takes out Zeus. Really good work with the flashbangs on the Danish team here. That's actually what set it up. Pimp with, with two important kills, but they came on the back of some really good flashbangs that kept Guardian quite confused in that situation. Seized in the middle with uh, 8 HP. And I'm not really even sure what has possessed him to, to cover this particular position. <laughs> I guess it's like hiding in plain sight. Never question Seized again. No, I, I mean, I'm, Never, sworn, I'm sorry, regarded. Seized. He just picks up two kills instantly before he goes down. So I'm not going to do that. Pimp with a quad kill. Now up to 12. He's tripled his, uh, his kills in the first half compared to, you know, the second half here. It's really, really impressive. Wait a second. My mind is blown. Kerrigan actually has one of the wood clacker things, too. So does he, he Does he have, like, a variety of noise-making things right now to, like, make noise with, basically? Cowbell and wood clacker? I don't know. There's a scout being picked up on Guardian. Um, not really, I think, much of... I mean, hoping for a straight headshot, get something working. They're going to be rushing the B-bomb site here. Copenhagen Wolves, can they find the first kill? Edward flashed, doesn't go... Uh, doesn't get anything done, unfortunately. Seized with a really good shot there. We'll take down Cajun. But is that going to be enough? Guardian, or Seized is caught here. The scout not really too effective on that range. No, not really making it work there, unfortunately, for him. And once again, Navi kind of Zeus, I mean, Zeus off, smoked off, basically. Zeus is waiting on the other side of it with Starks. They're doubled up, but Navi, I mean, there's no real... No real opportunity for them to get anything done in this round. We do need more shots of the of the Copenhagen Wolves team when they start winning because of that ridiculous toy that they keep that yeah. they keep pulling out. That's so stupid. Brave <laughs> looking to see if he can get the kill on someone coming up from lower dark. And there's the spray. Takes down Susan Starry. So they lose two members, but they get the round. And for the first time in a very long time, they take the round lead. 11 to 10. 
and they have quite a lot of money, even losing a couple of members there. Three of them start out of over 10,000, and now we now say, all right, if you if you really if you're gonna push us, if you're gonna force us, we will just bring the heavy artillery, AWP and auto sniper. Changing it up completely. There's the shots going through the smoke, however, but Navi have covered their tracks this time around and they play it safe. They jump through, so Copenhagen Wolves again, no information as far as how many people are over on the B site. And we see them play very passively because of this. Not pushing towards a long house, so Guardian with that AWP. He doesn't have anybody to pick off right now. It's a bit of a Titan sort of style right now coming out of Copenhagen Wolves. They just don't want to give it anything up, any opportunity for anybody to get any frags here. Glaive. As we can follow him on big box, is moving his way up. Cat, good flash in, and that's good teamwork. It's good to see the Copenhagen Wolves, despite everything, are, are making use of the communication and setting up plays for each other like that. Very basic bread and butter plays, you know, flashing around angles, flashing around yeah. corners, setting up smokes. Those are all crucial to getting this win versus Na'Vi. Down on long, it's Guardian holding with an AWP, and this is one of his absolute favorite positions. Unless they land some fantastic smokes and some even better flashbangs, I think Guardian could yes, decimate the team right here from this very position. There's one really good smoke and a flashbang to follow it up. And is it going to be up there? Already down. Guardian misses a shot. Oh, he's going to go down. Kerrigan opens it up and Seuss goes down. This is a big opening. Navi have invested heavily into this round and Edward will finally take down Kerrigan, but the bomb will go down. And this retake is going to be more than just a little bit tough, especially with the guy in lower dark. Uh, Guardian playing a crucial position right there. That whole Navi defense rotated, like, focused on him, basically, holding off Cross and not getting caught off guard like that. And unfortunately, this time around, Navi, they crumble yet again in a round they cannot up, essentially. They've spent so much money in this round, getting a Scar 20, yeah. getting an AWP, getting all the nades, everything together. And now they're about to lose it to Copenhagen Wolves, who have just already, who are already out on the hunt. The pack is loose, Anders. They're hungry. They want to get these guns off of Navi. Seized has to stay alive. This is such a big investment, and Cajun does go down. So a very, very important kill for Seized. If that auto sniper somehow uh, managed to die, that would be just horrendous for them. No kill happening at the end of the round here, so they will save the three rifles. It's 12-10, and now V. The cowbell is back. <laughs> I have a feeling that people are just... He's got them both! I knew it! He's got them both! Okay, this guy, Kerrigan, this is amazing. I, you know, and he reached out a third time there, and it's only for a drink. I thought he had something else. I thought he had, like, a third thing that he was and saving for this kind of round. The best thing about that last shot is we get the, the back of the German audience we have here, and they just look stunned. They look like they don't understand. <laughs> Dead silent. Who are these people from Denmark? Why did we even bring them here? Oh, man. 10, 12, and I'll be standing up talking a little bit, so I'm not sure what the issue is. I mean, I'm not sure you are allowed to do you know, technical timeouts. Actually, are we allowed timeouts and a half? Not that I have heard of, but, you know, maybe I've, maybe I've misread the rules here. <laughs> Either way... Um, Actually, that's really interesting. If things, things, it, I think there's a big argument to be made why you could have timeouts, but it is, it will, it, it's really hard to enforce because, you know, it's all, it all, I mean, Counter-Strike is such a fast game. If you have timeouts in the middle of everything, it could really do weird things to you the You could definitely dynamic. break momentum. It, yeah. it becomes a real tool, a yeah. tactical pause, basically. All of a sudden, oh, wait, 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 we're losing control of the situation, pause. Yeah. Like, it, it may be in, with limits where you're, you're allowed one pause per half. Or like two for a total best of three. So you really have to think about when you're going to use it because... Two for that a total would make best it of three, right? Yeah, there that would make go. it interesting, actually, because that would mean you, you, you use it you know, two times and you, you're gone, you know, you yeah, can't you do it anymore. You have to have that. Yeah. I mean, that could be it. Uh, I'm, I wouldn't even be opposed to it. I actually wouldn't even be opposed to it. It could make for some better Counter-Strike after all. So, hold on, let's see who checks their keyboard, because I'm, I'm assuming somebody, like, you know, oh, I broke my keyboard. Uh, Navi, economically speaking, not in a very good position. I mean, they've lost uh, actually every round in the second half. They've lost seven rounds in a row following the, you know, started with a pistol and then another six after that. So they are probably getting pretty anxious at the moment. Mm -hmm. Now they have, they have, that, that's why, you know, that pause right there is crucial for Navi because they break the momentum for Copenhagen Wolves. They take the time to talk over everything. They look confident when they sit back down. So like, okay, maybe we figured out exactly what's that, what has to happen here. But Navi are still gonna be able to get together a reasonable buy. That's uh, thanks to hang, ho hanging on to three guns essentially in the last round. So they hold on to the SCAR 20. Guardian has his AWP. They have three rifles. They have some nades. Navi should be able to do it. The question is do they decide to go for any kind of like play through lower dark or something that they haven't done yet really to try and throw Copenhagen Wolves off? I'll see. Ah, so yes. Round. You are, in fact, quick update. Thanks, Scoots. You have one timeout per game, and it's three minutes long. 
Okay, interesting. Starix starting off here with a good shot and Molotov to follow. Starix and Zeus, they pick it up over on Long. Copenhagen will walk right in to a pretty nice trap that was set there. And um, yeah, the, the Molotov to follow was so good. It just forced out the uh, Copenhagen Wolves player in that corner. Now it's a two on five and should be a cleanup round here for Navi. So after seven rounds in a row, they put down their foot and say, all right, you Lego building bacon munching bastards, it's <laughs> over. Oh yeah, Copenhagen Wolves, man. That was, that was a very good uh, demonstration or description rather. You said it, man. It's what it is. Nico pushing out of the middle alone, of course, here, and actually will get a really sick flick onto Seize, but it doesn't change the reality of the situation that he's alone and he's lost the bomb. He's got no teammates and no time to do anything. He can get a lot. If he can get rifles away from Navi, that's huge right now, and uh, they should be careful. He takes down Kavi, and how is he so fast? Actually, this is a real problem. These are two really expensive guns. Seize with the SCAR-20, guarding with the AWP. He's just managed to get the two most expensive guns off of Navi's side. Single-handedly, he's still got 20 seconds left. He can still do damage here. If he turns around and Edward peeks the corner, Edward does. Nico, he is vulnerable. He misses the shot. He's going to get backstabbed, so Seuss will finally end him. And there it is. It's going to be 12-11. <laughs> Uh, it's 12-11 and this is it, Navi. That pause, I mean, clearly doing wonders for them. And sometimes we see, I mean, it's, it's things that we've seen in the past, basically. You know, Titan taking those kinds of pauses. If they eco, they pause. They just use the round to run around and talk things over. Now it's actually in the rules where you're able to get one timeout per game, and that timeout lasts a maximum of three minutes. So very cool. We'll get to see more of this throughout these, uh, throughout these matches, I think, exactly how teams decide to use this new oh. change to the rules. The rush is on for the B. This is brutal, and it's a quick trade, and Edward and Seas, they clean it up. Edward with a great double kill, leaving Nico alone all the way in the back. He was late to the party, and now when he arrives, it's already over. The music is off, and everyone's just drunk on a couch somewhere. Do you agree with this play now that Copenhagen Wolves? Copenhagen Wolves, it feels like they're just trying to, they're just trying to catch Navi off guard, except that Navi, after that timeout, don't seem to be a team that's, uh, that's going to let that slide. I agreed with the play right up until the point when they saw the smoke was going to go down. Yeah. Don't like, rush that's, that's when you just abort the mission instantly. Just stop it right there. Don't rush through smoke. Rushing through smoke, bad things happen. Smoking kills, if you listen to Ven. I mean, it's bad. Yeah, somewhere out in the crowd or out in the, in the stream, Dazed is watching and shaking his head. Oh man, Dazed is having a, like an apoplectic fic right now. He's just... He's gonna keel yeah, over, he's gonna start twitching, you know, his eyes starts to go and uh, from from I buy power in case anyone is yeah. wondering. Not not a big fan and of the They're gonna be playing Christmas. later today, I buy power. We still have two groups today, guys, two matches from each to settle oh, first yeah. and second seed. This is still group B right now. Second seed on the line between Copenhagen Wolves and Navi. The loser of this match right now, and another a miss by there from Guardian. Really? Yeah, that was a random SMG that was bought there. So. Okay. Well, they can't really do that because they don't have that much money. they got to really stick in this game. I think they can definitely come back and win the next four rounds here. Copenhagen Wolves can buy this round, and the next one they might actually be able to force it up because then they'll have lost three in a row. So it is still a little bit scary, but they're, they're getting the game back under control, I think. I'm watching exactly how things are going to go here because Navi have a crossfire set up at B or at the mid, which is, I mean, again, very standard way to hold things. Navi do it very well. Zeus is going to fall back towards that A site, so they do get the three guys. Now we have to see exactly when Edward decides to back off. And I do like that they are going to move him back and potentially play a little bit more of a passive role. He decides to work his way back down B slope. So opening himself up to peaks if anybody had worked his way out, their way out through mid doors. But Copenhagen Wolves right now are currently just still poking around on the map, looking towards Cat. Guardian, you can see, this is almost like Jaws soundtrack right now. Dun -dun, he's slowly rising. But he's, he's currently just caught on the edge of the box. Yeah, he's sliding out. It's due to that, uh, that Half-Life engine physics or the Source engine. You can do that, but you can do the same in, in, in Half-Life. So we'll see. It's really interesting here. Jump down. Flashbangs again work out great. Guardian misses a shot, and now they're very close. He's got to hit the next one down in CT spawn. Seuss looking to pick anyone up. They're boosting up right in front of Guardian, and he does pick up Glaive and doesn't get the next one. But Edward with a really quick kill on Carrigan. Probably going to be a bomb plant. I'm not sure they can hold this one. It's a two on four. Nico going to pick up Seuss. He has to get a lot more kills here. The bomb is down, and the pimp, if he goes down, that might be the end, and he will be dropped here. Don't think Nico can hold it any longer. Once again, Nico, last man standing, and the flank comes in. Seized will catch Nico on Cat, and that is going to be the defuse ample time here for Navi, who have completely turned it around since their timeout. They have put a stop to it. 
And now Carrigan calls for a timeout here, so... All right, they're both ready to play this timeout game. That's really interesting. Copenhagen Wolves, especially because of that bomb plant, they have enough money, even enough money for an AWP. So let's see if we can get a camera on uh, on Copenhagen Wolves. Because um, So they're not doing like Navi. They're actually staying at their computers. They're not going to stand up and disconnect completely from the game. But obviously, Carrigan is, uh, is dishing out some orders. Yeah, Glaive as well right now. Like he is, he's definitely talking. I mean, he's the leader right now, who's going to be focusing on what exactly needs to go on. But they had two gate, two rounds right there where it, you know they decided. It looks like Copenhagen Wolves. They wanted to try and catch Navi off guard. Like maybe Navi had a plan. They wanted to go for all out aggression, and Navi just completely shut them down. A long and B. They just never happened for Copenhagen Wolves. So right now they have to be feeling a little bit worried. Navi yeah. are getting ahead as far as the rounds are concerned, and the money is just not there for Copenhagen. Some intense discussion going on. Can you, re can you can you understand anything that's going on right now? Glaive, how many slices of bacon did you bring? Man, if I, we lose I, this... I only brought one pack, man. I don't know what to do. Yeah, if we lose this, where's the nearest bar? I think that's the main <laughs> topic. And it's worth taking a time out to consider, because you've got to have that mapped out so you can get there quickly. And this is when they say, don't worry, guys. I found the perfect bar and grill. <laughs> <laughs> they do a mean bacon cheeseburger. Exactly. I... <laughs> Um, no, I mean, the, the, this is a timeout like this is actually a really good idea, and hopefully that means they can get their minds back in the game. I think it has... No, not ended quite yet. They're still, they have three minutes, so I guess they can take their time to do it. Ultimately, um, I, I mean, we can guess that Copenhagen Wolves are probably um, just trying to mentally get back into say, how can, we, how can we do this, guys? We're so close. You know, one of two, two rounds, we force the eco on Navi, and then we almost win the game. So... Yeah, mentally, I think that's more what it's about. Could be a trick play, but it seems unlikely at this point. Yeah, what, what, what the problem is, this is something we talked about going into the group phase. So, uh, this is what we talked about going into the group phase, is that Copenhagen Wolves really haven't had that much time to practice a full roster. So they don't necessarily have those strats to go back to that are just like, okay, this is our pocket strat. This is the ace up our sleeve. We're going to bust this out when we need to win a round. They really only have, like, all-out aggression, which we've seen two rounds running. That has not worked. And vanilla. So where do they go? They just have to land the shots now, and they're going to go for a B split. But once again, the defense is here for Na'Vi, and they're looking towards that B site. They know exactly what's going on, but Edward decides to face. Oh, and Siege goes down. Seuss gets another shot through the smoke. They're charging in here, but this is a three on four. And in the middle, Cajun picks up a kill and escapes through the doors. Well. They stay, they line up. Cajun takes down two, and Guardian alone in a one. Well, one on two, that's a really nice grenade, but he shouldn't go for this. They really don't have the money to try this. Two members of Na'Vi have less than a thousand dollars right now guardian must he must save this awp so the timeout the b split push it works out really well and the wonderful thing about this i mean Carrigan actually pre-fired Edward coming out a window, and that yeah. was very, very but heads up. Him, uh, Navi went for the flash with yeah. Edward peeking behind, and that's almost as like common as uh, as at the uh, top of B, right? Top of Banana on Inferno, right? Flash from the site, the guy peeks around the corner. This sort of scenario, you know, flash over the wall to B slope, Edward peeks at window, and they just they nailed it, Copenhagen Wolves. They saw it coming from a mile away, and then they just close in like sharks to pick off Seized. So. Navi and our call are the ones who are actually on the receiving end of a timeout win, and they have to just lock this down. 13-13 now the rounds, and the money is so tight for both of these teams. 27 rounds in. Nico looking for the jump shot, and Guardian strolls by. Doesn't even slow down to get up that get that pick off. And even though it looked like it should have been Nico being able to pick it off, just not quick enough. That's supposed to be, that's the style for Guardian as well. When Guardian starts hitting shots like that, that's when you start really getting scared. Copenhagen Wolves now, the ones who are down a man, trying to close in on this site. And they are pushing around it long. That could be an interesting position to take up. I mean, Starks hasn't seen too much action for quite some time, in fact. So maybe he could be the weak link, but he times the smoke perfectly. Flash is going to come through, and Copenhagen Wolves, they're going to commit. There's a molly. It's time for a barbecue. Who brought the bacon? Kerrigan gets one, and Starks is out. Two quick kills for Copenhagen Wolves. Oh, but Cajun turns around a little bit too soon, so it's back to a two-on-two. That would have been in such a great position for Cajun. If he had stayed alive, then it would have definitely increased the odds that they could do this. Edward waiting, not going to get the pick-off crossing, and Pimp should be able to put the bomb down, but all the way down from Long. It's going to be Seized running out. I don't think Kerrigan realizes. No, it's going to be a free kill coming in. Seized picks off the one, and now Pimp has to come up. Absolutely huge. They can't lose this round. The bomb plant helps, but they don't have enough money, and Kim Pimp goes down. Edward with a great double kill, and it's going to be Navi winning the round. Copenhagen Wolves, they they have to force it up and they'll have two members with enough money and everyone else just won't. 
nobody else. Exactly. That's why this round was so crucial. Now 14 rounds for Na'Vi. Copenhagen Wolves have to mix it up. They have to force up and buy whatever they can. There is no saving in this scenario. Unless they want unless, to fight for overtime. Unless they fight for overtime. But do you really, like, who has... I mean, the guts to do that. <laughs> like, you're like, okay, we'll eco and say that we take the next two, uh, two rounds. If Cajun is stayed alive for a short, I'm almost 100% sure Copenhagen Wolves would have, would have won that round. But Edwards sneaked up, picked him off, and then fell back to safety. So just great play from Navi at the end there. Really scary two on three for them. That could have definitely gone out of control quick. In the middle, Seuss, they're very close, and he's going to try and take the shot here. Not connecting with it and forced back into the CT spawn, but they must know he's there by now, especially with that flashbang coming out. If he re-peaks, they should be ready for it. Not quite yet. Just holding inside this bomb site, or sorry, inside the CT spawn here. They're gonna smoke him off. And are they gonna go for the B split? I mean, it worked once, maybe it's gonna work again. Guardian is actually all the way over on long, so he's not gonna be able to help out too much. I wouldn't be surprised if they do this. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Why, why try and fix it if it ain't broken, right? They can go back to a strat that worked for them. High pressure. Do they make the same mistake though, Navi, or do they do do they actually commit to the Zeus mistiming on the spray? But a lot of damage going out onto Copenhagen Wolves, just the same. Seas finds the headshot on Kerrigan instantly. Edward now lives and takes one out. He's still alive, but just briefly, two guys managed to sneak their way out onto the site, and Cajun B is in an ideal position for a flank. He's in the middle, they've walked past him. He should get the kill, he will get the kill. Guardian is down, and now they have to go back and find Cajun before he picks up the orb. He will have it, he scopes once, it takes down storage. He doesn't get the second kill, but it's a 2-1-1. One, one. Seuss, commit or run away, that's the big question here. If they run, they're basically, yeah, he's, no, he's gonna pick up the orb and run. He decides to back off, he decides to hold on to the AWP, this is it. He doesn't take that fight, even with the nades. Even with the nades to try and force out, force something out of the Copenhagen Wolves. I mean, with a molly like that, he can chuck that at back, back plateau, not have to worry about that angle anymore. He can put it behind Big Box, force the man around the corner. God, Cajun has been hitting some, some really important moments, and that was one of them. Glaive is top fragging, but right now everyone from Copenhagen Wolves is really stepping it up. I mean, I think he just saved, he just single-handedly saved Copenhagen Wolves there, because both members who were on yeah. the site were so low. Navi near full oh, HP, yeah. all of them. If all three Navi members crash into that B site, there isn't a hope for Copenhagen Wolves unless they can hit some of the sickest shots of their lives. So Cajun, I mean, magic with a deagle, no less. A deagle and then an op, and he just saves his team. I agree. I think, I think you're right. I, I'm, I don't see them holding the bomb side with just two members alive. So um, that was that was critical. That was some real they, ninja play in not, the smoke as well. They're not out of the woods yet. They need more. They need even more than they, than they just got. It's 14-14. If Navi win this round, Copenhagen Wolves have almost no money for the remaining round. And at that point, it, it, it could end 16-14, which would only be a little bit heartbreaking. But uh, obviously a big relief for Navi if it happens. And now V, on the other hand, got to be careful. They have no money either. Actually, this is do or die for both teams. Whoever yeah. loses this round very likely is knocked out of the tournament. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is it. 29th round. And Eco is on the line here, basically. It's going to be match point for whoever gets past here. And then the other team, forced by again. So little money. But that's been the story throughout this entire, this entire map. It feels like no team has really been able to get rolling and just start slamming rounds into their opponent's faces. It's always been a real challenge with the money, but now we get to see exactly how Copenhagen Wolves want to take, a, take care of this because they're really taking their time. They're taking so much time to set this up. They only have 35 seconds left on the clock, Anders. This is actually starting to get a little bit scary here. Yeah, it is. Seuss so really far back here, not controlling the mid as well as he was previous rounds, but this position from Seized is great. Edward goes down, it's not a good start. Are they gonna check? They will check! No, Seized goes down! This can't happen, not for Na'Vi. Pimp with a great opening kill and they are running already. They want to fight for overtime, they're not gonna try and retake it and I don't blame them. Disaster strikes, Copenhagen Wolves in the very last moments, they, f they find exactly what they needed. Uh, Down seized. to a T. Seized, look at Seized, I can't, you know, he, like, like hand clenching, he looks to Edward and Edward just kind of shrugs at him like, well, you know, it was really well done by them. That's, we kind of did what we had to do. We kind of did what we could, but they are not happy right now. Are you trying to pet Seize through the screen? <laughs> I mean, that position, this is how I look when I was in elementary school. This is how I spent most of my time, just disconnected and, and not happy about the situation at all. I think that's, that's what it is. And 
We're on Dust well, 2. Know. It's match and map point for Copenhagen Wolves, the third seed in the group, Navi being the first seed. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Navi, the reason why sees is like that is because they know that really it's it's so small the chance of them coming out ahead now. They had they managed to hold on to up a, a couple guns. Guardian has his AWP. If ever there was a time for him to step it up, now it is the time, Guardian. Now is your time to shine to get in there and get some frags. Copenhagen Wolves not giving him the opportunity yet, but Guardian looking towards Cat. We'll see if he gets a gets a chance. Yeah, a lot of smokes going on. You can't really see anyone. They're jumping right in front of him here, and he takes a blind shot through the smoke. Doesn't connect with anything, and um, no kills happening just yet in the, in the in this round. Good flashbang in the middle, just to force him back a tiny bit. But you're right. They have the they have the orb. They have the two rifles. Over time, I think Navi are very likely going to win. I think Navi is a team that really bounces back when it comes to stuff like overtime. Agreed. They could, like, they, they would reset basically. In regular yeah. time, what happened in regular time? We go into overtime here. That would only be too fitting. Uh, Copenhagen Wolves, they're playing out of their minds right now. Inching closer, Kerrigan. He's not afraid of the fire either. The fire cleanses Kerrigan, and now he is focused. Navi on the back foot, drops straight down into CT slope. Could catch a man off guard, and he does, in fact, do it, but Zeus will get him in the back. Yeah, that's an important return frag from Glaive. Can they actually get, deal with Starix? He's going to get the return again. It's a three-on-three, -three, and Bomb Plant is just going to happen here. 35 seconds left. It's a three-on-three -three and must win for Navi. they got to do this. They can't exit the tournament already. They are such a strong team. And now Edward goes down. Guardian with a good return, but they're very low on health. Pimp on the cross here. Can they squeeze? Squeeze them in. Guardian picks up the kill. Cajun now one on two. That bomb's still ticking. He goes for it and sees takes him down. And we're at overtime. Navi's, they get it and look at the sigh of relief there. They know what they just accomplished. That was so close. That was insanely close. But Guardian coming through. Guardian top fragging right now for Navi. 26, 4, and 17. And only fitting. Copenhagen Wolves have got to be reeling now after that. That's a situation that they just should not have lost. No, it, it, you're right. That should not have been a, a lost round for Copenhagen Wolves. They had the crossfire and Pimp, just to remind everyone again, Pimp started the second half with four kills, bottom fragging completely. Now he's at 22, so he's had an insane second half. But that last failure against Guardian... Um, That's not supposed to happen. That cost them yeah. dearly. That certainly cost them dearly. I mean, after that, basically, Navi seized Guardian working well together. Oh, we have to pick up the frags. We have the we people from Vox down in the box. are here. That makes Kaylee me really happy. Here. Look at this. You know, there's hidden franchises. I mean, if you don't recognize Shoxy there, I feel sorry for you. Everybody is here right now. Yeah, big shout out to the guys from Vox Seminar as well. Definitely very cool that you guys are joining us down in the, in the audience. Oh, and an SK <laughs> Gleam. All right. All oh, right. No. Shots fired. All right, 50 seconds left between the halves. And just to make things perfectly clear here, it's going to be MR3 10K starting money going into this overtime as well. And actually, there is a Copenhagen Wolves hat going on there as well. So we are getting some good shots of the audience here at Gamescom in Cologne, Germany. Hope you guys out of the audience are enjoying the show so far, but it's only going to get better and better as we go on. Of course, we have group uh, C and D still coming up with the likes of iBuy Power Fanatic and also Cloud9 Virtus Pro. Titan. Titan and Dignitas. Oh, those man. are those are the six highlight teams that are left. Cloud Nine. And that oh that team being that represented team too. All right. Hey -o. Where's Flamey? Hey everybody. We're waving at you guys. You can't see us, but we're waving at you. Flamey really managed to to prove himself this land though. He was he, had a he fantastic was good on land. I mean, for a guy who fell into a thicket of pitchforks, he definitely found a way to get back out of it. He's got some great rounds in under his belt this tournament, but now enough prattle. Let's move into the round. The countdown has begun here. Overtime, first round of overtime. And just to make it perfectly clear for everybody tuning in, it's first to four rounds. Three rounds on one side, and then you swap. And it's the first team to collect four rounds that will be moving on with the second seed here from this group. Copenhagen Wolves, again with the aggression. They're not wasting any time. They're going straight out onto the B site. Yeah, and they find in the corner Edward and sees this time the B push work. Last time we were wondering, do, is it reasonable to go full YOLO and Copenhagen Wolves answer is yes it is. You just gotta do it in the right round where there's no smoke. And that's what it is, Samler. Last time they faced the smoke, this time there was none. Yeah, that's the thing, exactly. And I'm not sure actually, hold on, let's see, real quick. But whether seized, he's down to 4,300, so he could have, uh, that's actually a full buy. 
Seized Edward fully bought up both. This is really going to be painful for Navi. The most important thing here is that actually, this is great here for Copenhagen Wolves. Actually, I want to see Copenhagen Wolves. I think they're playing this way too passively right now. They need to be out yep. hunting these guns because Navi in MR3 like this, when you only have ten thousand dollars, it's so important that you actually pick up the first round to make sure that you secure your money for the rest of the half. Navi holding on to three guns makes their lives a whole lot easier. It takes so much pressure off them as far as the money is concerned. And Copenhagen Wolves just sitting back on that site, not doing anything. They can afford to buy for the rest of this half. I think that was a big mistake there by Copenhagen Wolves. They should have been a bit more hungry going after Navi there. Yeah, I'm going to double down on that. I think you're right. That, that should have been a, a situation where Copenhagen Wolves need to identify really quickly that they're not coming and then just, yeah, as you said, Getting those kills, getting the AWP away especially. Cajun, oh, firing squad on that corner, and Cajun is already gone. All of them flashed as well, they're just shooting. And they managed to pick up one kill there. There's still gonna be a little bit of a play coming out here from, uh, well, Guardian, who manages to pick up Pimp at the cross, and that's Guardian doing his job, basically, trying to shut down this push coming through here towards the A site. They're getting picked off one at a time. Edward finds Nico, and now it's gonna be Kerrigan alive and Goose going for the spray, looking for the kill on Guardian, and Guardian somehow still here. And so is Edward. They should both be there right now. Kerrigan finally gonna pick up one. Can he get the second one? No, Guardian will pick up the triple kill. Is he gonna go for the quad? It's just Glaive left here, and he will be picked off any second. Second now, Starix will end it, but a great triple kill from Guardian, and that was exactly the round that now we needed. Hold on to the rifles, reset the mentality here, and now we're going into the last round of the overtime. There's one, two orbs being picked up here by uh, Copenhagen Wolves, and I don't think they can afford a third one, but uh, actually they will. So they, they're buying everything that they can here to try and shoot down the middle, yep. presumably, but Carrigan actually spawns for long, so he's probably going to go for that. Yeah, look at this. They're not, they're not going to know where the op is. If Nico, I would love to, for Nico, there we go. He takes a shot at mid, right? So he's saying, Navi, hey, I've got an op mid. Don't worry about long, don't worry about B. But nothing really comes of it in the end. Copenhagen Wolves, they take two shots and they get nothing back for it apart from a little bit of information. The smoke at mid and nothing really else past that. And then they go back to the B, to the T-spawn and put down the orbs and leave Nico with his and just reset the situation. Mm -hmm. So nothing really comes of it. All that excitement, it doesn't really work out. But look at the setup that they have uh, over here with Zeus. He's going to be flashed in any second by a teammate. And Guardian's also there. Starix in the back. This is like a really, really 2 1 2 3 combination. If they spot Guardian and he falls back, then there's still one guy and a flashbang to come. Guardian, I mean, Guardian's uh, he's already fallen back, uh, fallen back, but there you go. That's what you're talking about. The Zeus flash comes in, and Zeus manages to get that crucial peak. Navi now with the man advantage, closing in. Edward on B slow, faces one, gets two kills, and that's more than enough work done by Edward. He needs to get back around this corner as quickly as possible, and he is going to manage it somehow, living with three HP. No sneaking Guardian. this time, no. Cajun. Nicely managed round from, from, from Navi, and that triple setup up on, uh, up on the catwalk was absolutely brilliant. Because we actually only saw the, the sort of the light version of that one. The heavy version would have been them peeking out and getting killed by Guardian. Then Guardian falls back, the flashbang comes in, and then Zeus peeks. Imagine how terrifying that is. Imagine how confused you are in that moment when you're focusing on way too many different things. I love that 1-2-3 combo. So we'll see if that's going to be played at some point from Navi if they advance right now. Guardian has 30 kills. There's a 30 bomb being dropped here by the Slovakian player. He's maybe going to have to do more if they yeah. want to win this. Now Copenhagen Wolves, and this is a big question right now, and the second half of the overtime here coming in, if Copenhagen Wolves invest in the first round in massive orbs and auto snipers, then if it's they lose nothing, that round, it's all or nothing. It's all point. or nothing. That's, that's got to be going through Copenhagen Wolves' mind right now. It's like, okay, do we, do we go for broke? I mean, we still have some room to make uh, mistakes here because Navi, they need two rounds. They need two rounds out of, this, uh, out of the three in this next half. But the thing is that Navi now switch over to the T side. So is Copenhagen Wolves, is, there gonna, is their defense going to be good enough to handle this? We're down to 45 seconds now before we swap the half. But Copenhagen Wolves on the CT side. But they are looking... They had trouble versus Navi in the regular time. Let's not forget. If Navi can win two out of the three rounds on the terrorist side, they're going to win and knock Copenhagen Wolves out and move on to the quarterfinals. That's where it's down to here. The first team to 19 rounds is what we're looking for. Right now it's 17-16 as a scoreline. So just to catch everyone up in case you're wondering, they will start with 10,000 on either side, which is not that much money if you're on the CT side especially. Yeah, CT side, that's why it's so important to pick up that first round in the first in the, um, at the half when you're on CT, is to make sure that you have the money to buy throughout the rest of the half. If you lose it, then you start you start worrying a little bit because you're buying ops. I mean, to, if you want to full buy with an op, it's almost like $7,100. So it's a lot of money that you can fully invest as an opera right now on the CT side. We have one picked up by Nico. 
So they're not going all in. That's essentially what we just saw. They, they're leaving themselves room to try and see if they can if they can win the rounds, assuming they lose this first one. Yeah, it's 71.50, sorry. Oh uh, yeah, it is It is way too much. Guardian spotting at mid, looking for a shot, looking for an opportunity. He's gonna get smoked off, and this is actually Copenhagen Wolves pushing up mid aggression, totally changing up the pace here. Cajun missing a golden opportunity. He's not getting any frags. Nico will pick off Seized in lower dark, and Nico gets two. He made up for it. They fall back, and that's what we're talking about. Copenhagen Wolves completely changing things up. And I'm glad you kept talking then, Semler, because I was about to get really angry at Copenhagen Wolves. I think the very second they failed that first easy kill, as you said, on the guy at top of mid, I wanted them to instantly cancel that operation. But they stuck to it and, and won it, but I was really sure that was going to cost them the round. Now they're back to a defensive position, and, um, and we'll have to see here. Five on three, they should be able to hold play safely and wait for Na'Vi to come. If they start peeking against Guardian, that's where things really become dumb. Now, Nico just made it up, like, right in his spades right there. In spades from Cat. Guardian will find Nico, the revenge for his fallen mates, and Navi are not out of this yet. 45 seconds left on the clock. That's a lifetime for them. They are capable <laughs> with so little time to act. They are still capable of taking this. Zeus finds a man through the smoke, but Glaive instant return, and that's exactly what Copenhagen Wolves have to do. If they get into these sorts of situations, it has to be one-for-one -one trades. Edward gets back around, but the, guess what? Guardian is up on the site already. Yeah, he's coming up from behind here. Edward has the bomb, though. He has to stay alive. He goes, gonna go down, and that might just seal the deal here. So one on two, 20 seconds to pick up the bomb and run back and put it down. It's gonna be more than just a little bit difficult here for Guardian. They will pick it up, and actually that Molotov is now gonna sort of zone them out. They're gonna have to wait. So he's gonna get the bomb plant here with very little time left, and he can hold it now. They have to have, this could be Guardian's round. This could be Guardian's round. The thing is, it comes down to timing. They're gonna, they're gonna go at the same time, a man out on long. Guardian takes the shot, and the crucial shot that Guardian had to land, it doesn't happen. <laughs> and More the reaction, cowbell. The reaction from Copenhagen Wolves is priceless. They will steal the AWP, and it is gonna be now 17-17. The next two rounds, decide either double overtime, which would be a real delight, or it's gonna be one or the other team. It depends all on this one. The bomb plan means they have a lot of money on Navi's side, but for the final round, especially Guardian could run out. He's purchased an AWP after all. Yeah, he has. And again, with the AWP, Guardian looking for the shot, and there you go, gets rid of Nico. Right shenanigans this time, Nico. He's not gonna allow it, Guardian. But you, say, you do have to give uh, put emphasis on how well Copenhagen Wolves played that 1v2 at the end, both peaking at the same time, one out at long, one in cat. Just such a tough position for Guardian to look for. And really the, the thing that made the, the difference as well is that they made the decision to go long so quickly yeah. that in Guardian's mind he wasn't quite prepared for it. If they had waited three more seconds, probably Guardian would have thought. And now they bunch up to it. They actually ran into each other in the middle and Guardian now just wrecking them. Triple kill and Pimp is going to go down as well. And that was more than just a little bit silly from Copenhagen Wolves. Now, if you understand, you understand why I'm being hard on Guardian in that last round. You know, a shot that he could have landed, that's why. He gets three. And yeah, now but this is just Kerrigan alone. He walks right into the smoke against Edward. Edward manages to spot him in time. And now Navi are now one round but, away. But the second of that kill was was gifted to him basically on a silver platter as sure. Kobe Knight. The way they, they, like, you can't <laughs> just walk into each other and, and sort of stand still. That was very, very bad. Unfortunately, because now it's match and map point for Na'Vi. That's, you, at this point, any tiny mistake and you lose the game. Oh, there's no room for error and already the tag. Guardian, Zeus, they're taking shots and Cajun gets nailed down to 20 HP through the door. So already, Copenhagen Wolves behind here at the very beginning of this round. They decide to stack up three on B as well. And that's because Cajun got nailed. They don't want to let Navi speed up behind with some aggression and try and take advantage of the man that's taken a wound. They want to plug that gap. As soon as they feel, okay, doesn't seem like they may be coming this way, they rotate that man back to mid and set up with the vanilla 2-1-2 again. They're gonna play this slowly, Navi. They are not gonna throw anything away, not give any inches. They want to win, they very likely will. Already Cajun, really low on health at the moment. Holding the middle. Oh, sorry, that's Pimp holding the middle. Cajun's all the way in the B bomb side. So they're gambling a little bit actually here that Ganavi are going to go for a B split push. If they go for A right now, the defense is light to say the least. Well, Navi have favored that B side. The Navi favored that B side push throughout the regular time on their T half. So this isn't too much of a stretch here for Copenhagen Wolves. Question is, does Pimp have the right timing? There's the flash, goes for the spray. He doesn't get it, Pimp. This is huge, and he doesn't get a kill, not a one. Does damage, but that's not good enough. He needed to get the frag, and now it's Glaive facing. Guardian snuffs him, and this is falling apart. It's all Cajun with 20 HP, and he's not gonna be doing it. 
Two on three, really important kill for Kerrigan. It's not quite over, but Edward will make it. So Nico goes down, and now Kerrigan is in a one on two. That bomb is already down, and retaking this is going to be damn near impossible. Molotov as well, making sure he only has one entrance, but he's going to be charging through it. He goes down, Such with the kill, and now he survived. Copenhagen Wolves, 1917. They make it to the playoffs. Navi have done it. They have managed to secure that second seed after all, and that's been the tale so far today. Group a, Nip second seed, Group B, Na'Vi second seed. But the most important thing is they do make it into the playoffs in the end. Copenhagen Wolves put up one hell of a fight, but maybe they needed more cowbell. I think what they needed more than anything is one less mistake. Yeah. And a single one, that 2-1-2 two -one -two at the A-bomb side in normal time, that was when it changed from Copenhagen Wolves winning to losing. It's also remarkable. The thing is that we have, I mean, we have to remind the people of this is that Copenhagen Wolves coming into this tournament were definitely not feeling prepared. They only had a week as a full lineup to really get the training in. They did not have they did not have um, a boot camp. They decided no. to go for an online boot camp because they felt like the days were so valuable that the day, this time spent traveling, they didn't want to give it up. They wanted to focus on online play. So for them to take a favorite, to take the whole thing, yeah. to take them to overtime, yeah, that's a great bad. performance right there from Copenhagen Wolves. All right, guys, we're going to go to a commercial break, so don't go anywhere. We will be up with Group C and D. It's going to be really a lot of fun. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here at ESL 1.